man because he's God. That doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't bother me at all that God would show himself to us. You could also say that God can't possibly show any love toward those who are in a corrupt world, corrupt universe, a corrupt world. But that was his precise point, that God would restore everything that was condemned. God would restore everything that was corrupted. The whole purpose of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, or as I call him, Yeshua HaMashiach, is to restore the entire world to its beginnings. Eden, Adam and Eve. And he would restore the world back to its original place before the enemy stole the precious gift of eternal life. Attempted to steal it. See, the enemy of our souls, the enemy of our life, our lifeblood, our very life, comes in very small and minute ways to come and steal the precious gift that was already given to us. It comes in the form of average things. It comes in the form of eating too much. It might come in the form of too much te television. It might come in the form of just being bored and not wanting anything to do with anything beyond what you're used to. Sometimes you have to take a gamble, take a chance. Sometimes you have to take a leap of faith. And when I mean faith, I don't mean just believing in the ethereal nothingness. I mean How you doing? being hey. persuaded Good. fully. Hey. Being persuaded. You a believer? Oh yeah, I just came from Arch Street, St. Anthony's. I love it. All right. All right. What I mean is having the faith to be faithful to what God has already put into your heart. I don't mean having faith in something that you can't possibly understand. That That's something we can't understand. He will have to open our minds and our hearts to that. But what I mean is, when he came to this earth, he showed himself in human form so that we would understand. Amen. See this? This Old Testament, some people call it the Old Testament, I call it Torah and the prophets. He came in the form of a human being to show exactly how to apply this, exactly how to do this, and give us the power and the strength to do it. A lot of people think that Christianity is impractical. It has nothing to do with daily life. That's not true. A lot of people think that it's just philosophy and it's just philosophizing and walking around talking about things that we can't possibly apply here on earth. Love and service. That's not true. Yeah. He came to show us how to do it and give us the strength to do it. Through his love, I don't want to yeah. through his love and through his power, we are able to love. Amen. Many people walk around thinking that they have some sort of divine love, that they have some sort of ability to be the most loving, kind, and generous person that ever existed on the planet. We walk around saying, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm the best thing you ever seen around here. That's on the down low on your spirit, but God already sees through that. God sees through that, that pride. I don't have a problem with believing that God can show up as a person because he created man. How could God be limited to just being in heaven? That's impossible. Not only that, sacrifice and blood was his way of showing his love for us. That one could die for another. And God himself dying for his creation and humanity was his way of expressing that love that he already is. See, we say that we love, but God is love. We say that I'm a loving person. What can be wrong with me? I'm a loving person, but God is love. Amen. Love emanates from God. Amen. 
And apart from God, there is no love. There's only appearance of love. There's only a shadow of love. It's not a full love. But true love comes from the creator of love. All the people in this world are lost in sin and going to burn to hell because they do not know God. What is the last part that says? Because they do not know God. Amen. And it's not because we're all bad people. That's part of it. God bless you. It's yeah. We do not know God. Yes. I observe Mashiach. Yeshua Mashiach. Okay? Thank you. Okay? God you bless you. Amen? Go ahead, you sir. Okay. God is the creator of all the known universe. God is the creator of you and me, and he cares. He cares about us. Why would he care about those who rebel against him? Because he is love. It's irresistible. God cares about his creations. God cares about those who rebel against him. And that's something we can't imagine because then I, uh, I'm naturally a man of wrath. I'm naturally a man of anger. But God taught me how to love my enemies. Amen. God taught me how to withstand hatred and evil. A lot of people think that we're about division and we're about intolerance and we're about exclusion. No. See, if God loved the entire world, the entire universe that he created, how could he exclude anybody? I'm not saying there aren't supernatural beings. I'm not saying there aren't other worldly beings such as angels. But they're not worthy of being worshipped. Angels are not worthy of being worshipped. Angels see God as worthy of being worshipped. See, the rejection that we feel is the same rejection that God feels when you reject Him. But I don't take that personally. I don't take it personal. And I don't think even God takes it personal because now He sees you as being under the blood of His Son. So long as you accept that, so long as you obey that, so long as you follow that, so long as you trust and obey that, And don't believe for one second that I see myself as being purely spotless. The only spotless one I know is Yeshua, Jesus. But he, every day, day by day, day by day, day by day, he will work on our hearts and he will work on our flesh and he will work on our sanctification 
to make us holy people to shine and excel in the way that he created us to do so. A lot of people are chasing people, places, and things. But there is a world to come. There is a world to come that we can't see. And before that world comes, where God recreates all things, he has to destroy this world. He has to destroy this one before he creates it anew. I ask anybody to ask me any question. I don't mind it. I don't mind being questioned. Do you? I'm going to pass it off to Michael. In the name of the Lord of Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bind up all demons in this area right now. Father God, I ask you to lose your angels upon this place right now in Jesus' name. To pierce open ears, to pierce hearts, so they may receive your word with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today is a beautiful day. Every day is a beautiful day that you open up your eyes. Today is a day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice in it. Though my flesh is weak, my spirit is willing. It is by the spirit that I preach to you right now. I've come to you to present the gospel of Jesus Christ, that whosoever shall call on his name and believe in him and believe that he rose up after three days, the same shall be saved, Romans 10, 9. But those who do not believe, they are already condemned, and this is the judgment. Today is a hot day for some, for some almost unbearable. But this heat is just a sample of the heat that awaits those who do not want to turn their lives to Jesus Christ. Some people are already walking around in a state of hell right now. They have addictions. They have mental problems, the psychiatrists diagnose as a chemical imbalance in the brain that they use medicine to treat with. There's only one thing that can set you free from all those things, and that is the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to this earth to set the captives free. Who are the captives, you may ask? The captives are those who are walking blindly in allegiance to Satan. They are captive to his schemes. They listen to his voice instead of the Lord of uh, the Lord Jesus. Jesus said that he came to give you life and life more abundantly. But many people think that a, a life of abundance is only financial. You have people in this world that have finances that kill themselves, that kill other people, that snap and hurt other people around them. I don't know what it is that people here are trying to obtain, but I can tell you that the number one thing that you could obtain in this life is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Without him, you will perish. There's no amount of schooling that will save you. There's no philosopher that will save you. There's no book that you can read outside of the Bible that will save your soul. Everything else is man's knowledge, fallen knowledge greatest book ever written is the Bible, the Holy Bible, all 66 books. When I was 26, I was heading down a path of destruction. I was doing narcotics, I was selling them, I was fornicating with different women all the time. So one day I woke up and I felt empty. I've never felt this emptiness before because I thought that I was living a life that was fulfilling to me. It was at this very moment that I started to, if you will, hear voices 
not audible ones, but like strong thoughts. One of them was urging me to continue smoking weed, keep fornicating. The other one was telling me to stop and turn away from them. I listened to the voice that told me to stop and turn away from those ways. The second that I turned away from those things, my life turned upside down. Every car that I owned was breaking. My own parents turned on me. My friends were turning on me. They were showing up in places where I never told them I was just to tempt me. It was at that moment that I realized that your own enemies are the friends that you keep. That's why they say, bad company corrupts good morals. The Bible says, be separate from the world. Do not be partakers of it. When a person gets born again, they are supposed to live a life sanctified unto the Lord every day. The Christian life is a life of repentance every day. We all fall short of the glory of God. That is why we need to repent daily. Those who say they have no sins are liars. Yeah, and they you. shall inherit the lake of fire. Now you see what it is. I don't know. Um, what is your problem? Then? Or something? Jesus can set you free from anything that's going on in your life. If you have depression, suicidal thoughts, yeah. addiction. If you would just surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You haven't seen nothing And humbly yet. accept his gift on the cross. He will I save your soul. Too, but when I go to Jerusalem, yeah. then I'll see it. If you don't feel like you need to be saved, I'm sorry for you. But Jesus came for everybody, not just some people, for everyone. I'm not preaching this message today because I hate any individual walking by me. I am saying these things to you because I care about you. I care about you enough to warn you. After this life comes a judgment. Depending on what you do in this flesh, this body that's borrowed, that doesn't even belong to us. Our works will be judged in the end. Depending on how you live this life, your life will be judged in the end. Two weeks ago, we had a 20-year-old famous rapper get gunned down. His lyrics were infused with murder, violence. I heard this morning another rapper that was associated with the rapper Drake was gunned down outside of a nightclub in Toronto. I listened to a freestyle rap of his. Same thing, he rapped about death. The Bible says what you sow is what you reap. So I ask you today, what are you sowing into this world? Are you charitable unto your neighbors? Do you care about the person next to you? See, in the Bible it says that you don't have to kill somebody physically to murder them. It says that if you have hatred in your heart towards anybody, you have already murdered them inside of your heart. Many people walk around with resentment and unforgiveness. The Bible says that if you've been forgiven, you must also forgive. The Bible says to love the Lord your God with your whole being, your mind, heart, soul, and your body, and then to love your neighbor as you love yourself. These are the two greatest commandments. On these two commandments hangs the whole law. God bless you. God bless you. I urge you today, if you hear the sound of my voice and what I'm saying to you is convicting you of anything that you're doing in this life, to come and speak to us about how you may be saved. Salvation is for everybody. It's not just for Jews, it's for Gentiles, for everyone. Amen. It says that there's neither Jew nor Gentile in Jesus Christ. There are no chosen people. The only chosen people are those who belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It doesn't matter where you are from. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter where you are from. Amen. Your denomination will not save you. Yes. Your denomination will not save you. Amen. Amen. Being a Baptist and associating with a Baptist church will not save you. Calling yourself a Presbyterian will not save you. Calling yourself a Catholic will not save you. The Bible says you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Amen. Those who are born in the spirit will not live in the flesh any longer, and that is how we can overcome sin. I ask you today, have you been born again? If you are still walking in sin, I would seriously question if your denomination has saved you. See, God's grace gave us the ability to overcome sin and not continue to walk in it. The Bible says that drunkards, liars, fornicators, thieves, Homosexuals, 
will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Many people today have hardened their hearts to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They say with their mouth that they believe, but in their hearts they hate God. They do not want to walk in his ways. Jesus said, if you love me, then you will love what I love and hate what I hate. God said that. To hold on to the things that are pure, to love what is pure, and to hate what is evil. See, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, sir. The Bible also says that the fear of the Lord is the hatred of all evil, to refrain from it. But many people do not hate evil. They love it. They run to it. That is why they do not have the fear of the Lord. It's a wonderful thing to fall into the hands of a fearful God. We serve a mighty God. We serve the creator of the universe. There is only one name under heaven by which you may be saved, and that is the name Jesus Christ. Allah won't save you. Buddha won't save you. Amen. Your local priest at the church won't save you that you can say 20 Hail Marys to. He can't save your soul. He's just a man just like I am. And he's valuable to sin just like I am. The Bible says to call no man your father. Only you only have one father and he's in heaven. But why do some church systems tell you to call a priest the father? It's not biblical. You have a Catholic priest right now telling people that there is no hell. Which is a lie. There is most certainly a hell. And hell is a place where we will go if we do not live according to the standards set by Jesus Christ. He set a mark high where we can obtain it as long as we live our life in the spirit and not in the flesh. It doesn't mean that sometimes we don't fall and stumble. We do. We all fall. But the Spirit of God gives us the strength to get back up and pick up that cross and follow Him every day. I urge you today, if you have not been saved, to give your life to the Lord. It doesn't have to be in public. Go home. Get on your knees and cry out to God and ask Him to save you and He will save you. His name is Jesus Christ. He can set you free from addictions. He can set you free from mental problems. He can set you free from the rejection that you felt from your own parents as a child, from the rejection that you felt from people in this world. See, God's love is perfect. He loves us perfectly. He loves us like a good father. When we go against him, he punishes us, the same way our father does if we're being bad. Many people walk around and think that as long as I'm saved, that's the only thing that is important. And that is a lie also. The Bible says to go preach the gospel to every creature. The Bible says that the lukewarm shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven, but God will spew them out. It means that he will vomit them out. He said he'd rather you be cold than to be lukewarm. With lukewarm water, it's useless. At least with cold water, it will refresh you. But lukewarm water, you can't do anything with. You can't enjoy coffee with it. You can't make soup or instant noodles with it. God looks at us the same way. He wants us to be on fire for him, to live our lives for him, not to be conformed to the ways of this world. That means that while people are walking in a certain direction and they're choosing the main path, that we are to walk opposite of, them, of it, to not stand in the way of sin, but to warn others of what is coming to everyone. See, it doesn't matter if you're a vegan, it doesn't matter if you're a pescatarian, it doesn't matter if you're a vegetarian, death comes to us all. Your diet will not save your soul. Your love for animals will not save your soul. The only thing that will save your soul is giving your life to Jesus Christ, fully. Not one Sunday a week, not one Bible study a week, but to pray every day and to ask God's will in your life and ask Him to guide every step that you have. To guard your hearts against the wiles of the devil. To protect yourself, not to accept every doctrine into your heart, but to watch carefully and measure what every person says to you by what the Bible standards say. The Bible says to test every spirit. Believe ye not on every spirit, but test them to see whether they are of God or not. 
See, there are many groups out there that call themselves Christians, but they can't be because they deny the Lord Jesus Christ. The Jehovah's Witnesses are a good one. They completely deny the deity of Jesus Christ. They only read from the Old Testament. Nobody cares. That's why you need a microphone. Jesus Christ will save your soul. That's why you need a microphone. Jesus Christ will save your soul. Jesus Christ will save your soul. Jesus Christ loves you, sir. Jesus Christ loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. God bless you. Jesus Christ loves you. He wants you to repent, sir. Why is it that you have such a hatred in your heart towards the name Jesus? We like it. We like it. We like it. We love God. We love Jesus Christ. We love Jesus Christ. The same way they have a gay pride parade, this is Jesus pride. We're proud of Jesus. We're proud of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I don't have the fear of man in my heart. I fear the creator. I fear God who made my soul. I don't fear you. I don't fear not any one person walking by me. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ came to save everybody's soul. Jesus Christ's will is that none perish. But see, some men have hardened their hearts. They love their sins way too much. They love their alcohol. They love their poison they put into their body. They work every day, they slave for that money just to obtain what it is that's destroying them in the end. See, this is what it means when you live in the flesh. If you lived in the spirit, you would surely understand that the ways of man are, lead, are, are ways to death. They're highways to death. Jesus Christ is the only one who can give you a new life, who can renew your soul, who can lead you to green pastures. It's very amusing that people can have gay pride parades in peace, but one person says the name of Jesus in Cambridge and people get into an uproar about it. Nobody likes that. Nobody wants to hear it. Well, I don't hate gay people, but I would appreciate if they didn't walk down the street throwing, showing how gay they were to me. I have friends that are gay. I sit and eat with them. I don't hate any person. I'm just naming an example. We have all these pride parades, but when's the last time we had a parade where Christians walked down the street to show Amen. people how proud Amen. they were of Jesus Christ? Amen. Or better Amen. yet, how about when Christians walk by here, instead of being quiet about their faith, them. they say Amen. Amen. Instead of being quiet and tucking their tail and being scared of what man's going to think about them. You should fear only one thing, and that's the judgment of God, not man. Man cannot condemn you anywhere. Amen. Man can destroy your body, but he cannot destroy your soul. Amen. Fear the one who can destroy your soul and body in hellfire forever. Amen. Man cannot do anything to you. If you think that what I'm saying is fake, then why are Christians dying worldwide? Why? Just for the name of Jesus, if what I believe is a fairy tale, then why even get mad about it? Just pretend I'm talking about Dr. Seuss and turn the channel. <laughs> Well, you see, there's power in the name of Jesus. That is why people get angry, because there are evil spirits in this earth, and they are in people, and they are in the environment. So when people hear the name of Jesus, they do not like it, because there's power in that name, and those spirits know that they're going to stand before the great God, and they will be sentenced. Matter of fact, they're already sentenced right now. The devil's time is short. He's finished. Stick a fork in him. He's done. That's why he's running around trying to get as many people to go with him as he can. There's a saying, it's not in the Bible, but it's very true. Misery loves company. And the devil is trying to get as much company with him as possible. And he's doing it very successfully. As long as he can keep whispering to you, and you believe every single lie that he's telling you, you will go in his ways. You see, the devil is a liar. It says it in the beginning. Above everything else, the devil is a liar. The truth is not in him. That's all he's been doing from the beginning of creation is lying to people. He got Adam and Eve to fall in the garden through a lie. He convinces people to overdose and kill themselves from a lie. He convinces people to shoot up schools and hijack airplanes by whispering in their ears and convincing them to follow him that he's the right way. But I can tell you right now that he is not the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We only have one life to get it right. There is no reincarnation. After this life, it is over. If a person lived this life and he was a wicked man, there is no rest in peace. 
There is no rest in peace. When a man that lives a life a certain way dies, there is no rest in peace. There's a rest in torment. What are you chasing today? Are you chasing money and an education at Harvard University? Or are you chasing the Lord Jesus Christ? See, many people join fraternities. They think that that's going to give them a fast track to where they need to go. It won't. All it does is just yoke you to evil spirits. Yeah, you can obtain a good job. You can obtain a nice car. You can get some good looking girls with that money. But your soul is empty. But what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world but to lose a soul in the process of it? And there's many in this world already that have forfeited their souls. They got their airplanes. They got their $2 million cars. But when they die, there is no peace for them. They can have a mausoleum. Their soul is what counts. Jesus came here to set your soul free. Jesus said, the truth shall set you free and those who have the truth are free indeed. My friends, I ask you today, do you have the truth in you? Do you have the truth living inside of you? If you did, he would be guiding your ways. He would be telling you where to stay away from. But if you do not have the truth, then you will listen to every voice that's speaking to you. See, the Bible says that those who are deceived turn around and go on deceiving others. There are many people who think that they figured out the way to life, that their philosophy is the right way. And they go around spreading that philosophy to other people, becoming workers of iniquity. See, that's the problem with deception. When people are deceived, they don't keep it to themselves. They're proud of it. They go shining it down front street like a big lamp to everyone. They think that what they have is love. But it is not love. It is lust. See, the Bible says that the eyes of man are never satisfied. I think it says, so hell is never full. Hell's mouth is enlarged, and there are many people walking into those gates, and that gate is wide. And there are many roads that lead to it. Any road that leads you away from the Lord Jesus Christ is taking you on the path to destruction. You see, there are many paths, but they all wind into one road. It's like going on the highway when you merge onto the highway. Every road besides the highway of Jesus is taking you straight to hell. You see, this is love. I'm here to warn you. I'm here to warn you away from the darkness that I used to walk in myself. And no, I am not a finished product yet, but God is working on me. He is faithful. It says that if he starts a work in you, he will finish it. As long as we stay faithful to him, he will stay faithful to us. You see, it's not just a quick dip in the water, and that's it. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It's not how it works. It's not a microwave deliverance where you just hop in a microwave like a hot pocket, and in three minutes you come out super sanctified. Sanctification is a process. So is deliverance. That's why Paul says to run the race. It says, those who endure until the end, those shall be saved. Not those who take one baptism and go back to living like Satan. Jesus Christ loves everyone. You see, if you've ever experienced the joy of the Lord, you will see that it's stronger than any high. It's stronger than any alcohol you can drink. It's better than any relationship you can have with anyone. It's better than your pet at your house that loves you even on a bad day. Jesus is with you even when you can't feel him or see him or hear him. He's still there. Jesus is the only thing that's keeping this place from being torn apart. You see, it says in the end days, there's a man that's going to emerge. His name's going to be the Antichrist. His spirit is in the world already. I see many people's faces when they hear the name of Jesus. It looks like a newspaper. It just shrivels up. They can't even look at it. You see, because there are evil spirits out here. They are dwelling within people. Many people have become lovers of themselves, boasters, they're proud. They're proud of who they are. They don't love God, they love themselves.
I urge you today, if you're within an earshot of what I'm saying to you, to look into your own heart, examine yourself. If you do not believe God is real, ask him to show you that he's real. He will show you, challenge him. Challenge him, yell out to him, cry out to him, tell, tell him, show me yourself. Show me who you are. If you are sincere in your heart, he'll show himself to you. See, it is only faith that saves us, faith alone, faith in Jesus Christ. Nothing else can save you. There is no little trinket that can save you that you can get from a souvenir shop. Rosary beads won't save your soul. Saying 21 Hail Marys every Sunday won't save your soul. Wearing a cross around your neck will not save your soul. Bearing your cross every day will save your soul. It is very easy to bind a necklace with a, with a cross on it, but do you love the Lord your God with your mind, heart, soul, and your body, with everything that you have? If you think that a cross is going to protect you like the devil, like he's a vampire, it doesn't work that way. He sees you. He knows exactly who Christians are, and he knows who's following God and who's not. Many people spiritually are walking around dead already. They'll say the name of Jesus, but God's going to say to them on Judgment Day, I don't know you, you're a worker of iniquity. Those who belong to God, do His will. Do the will of the Father. I see that definitely. Like you're a... My only desire in this world is just to hear my Lord say, Well done, son. Well done. I just want to say God bless everybody here today in Jesus' name. I'm going to pass it off to my brother Mike. I'm going to give him the mic. God bless all of you. Praise the Lord, everyone. It's good to be here. Another hot, sunny day today. And, you know, the Bible says that the, the day of the Lord is something in which everybody, you know, can face in any moment. But while we're walking out here with tight shorts on and people showing all their skins and and having a good time and eating ice cream and walking dogs and riding in bikes. A day is coming. We don't know when that day is, but a day is coming. And that's why I named the ministry, Be Ready Street Ministry, to tell everybody to be ready. Be ready, be prepared, because ready or not, here he comes. That's why we have to be ready. But we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We are here to spread the gospel, which means good news. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did good news. He died on the cross for you. He died so you could live today. He died so you could wake up in the morning. He died so you could have food on your table. He died so you could have eyes to see and ears to hear. And He died so you have two legs and two arms. He died just for you. And you know what? He didn't say one mumbling word. What a mighty God we serve. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We're living in a world that's full of unbelief. A lot of people don't believe in God. What the Bible says that for whosoever believes in him, should not perish. If you don't believe in God, you are going to perish. Amen. But God does not want you to perish. God wants everybody to repent. Repent and turn. All through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible tells people to return to turn to Him. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. While you have a chance, while you're alive and well today, you got have another opportunity to turn and come to Christ. You will not see Pope Francis out here, out in the streets of Harvard Square. You will not see Joel Osteen or T.D. Jakes. You are not gonna see uh, Benny Hinn out here doing miracles. You know, but you will see a street preacher. You will see the Be Ready Street Ministries to tell everybody to be ready because if you're not ready, you're gonna fall into the wrath of God. And you don't wanna be on God's angry side. You want to be on his side. 
and his side only. We serve a loving God and a caring God, but our loving God also has an anger. He's angry with the wicked every day. God is angry with the wicked every day. God loves the world, that's why he died for you. He, he sacrificed his life so you could live today. He didn't have to do it, but he did. You know, I was an alcoholic, I was a drug user, I was a pot smoker, I was a club goer, I was a womanizer, and God just turned my life around. My life being resurrected only because of Jesus Christ. I was hard-headed. My mother tried to tell me what to do. I, I wouldn't pay no attention. My father tried to tell me what to do. I wouldn't pay him no mind. But once I met Jesus Christ, he cleaned me up on the insides by the blood of Jesus Christ is why we are here. It's not, you know, I could be, I could be at home under the AC watching a basketball game or watching a, watching a World Cup. I could be at home watching a World Cup under the AC. But something tells me that I need to come out here and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ because this world is going to hell. This world is going to hell in a handbasket. And the devil got this world to see. Amen. But there's hope. There's hope in salvation. There's hope in Jesus Christ. And there's no hope in the Pope. Pope Francis is not giving no hope. Amen. Pope Francis is just a puppet that's controlled by Satan. So don't trust in the Pope, trust in Jesus Christ. And don't trust in your heart, trust in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge his ways and he will direct your path. Everybody has a path to life and everybody has a path to death. The Bible says, broad way, broad is the way that leads to death, Amen. that leads to destruction. But narrow is the way that leads to life. Amen. And life ever everlasting. Amen. Jesus came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Amen. He is life. He is life and he is the resurrection. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus said, I am the light of the world Amen. to shine in the darkness. Amen. And right now we live in a dark and cruel world. We live in an evil world. But we are here to shine the light to let everybody know that God loves you. God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son. The Bible says that he commanded his love towards us. While we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. Nobody would die for you. Your mother, your father would not die for you. Obama, Donald Trump would not die for you. But Jesus died already. He died and he rose on the third day. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He did it for each and every one of us. And that's how much love God has for you. The Bible says there's no greater love than a man that laid down his life for his friends. That's a God that I serve. God is not only a prophet. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Alpha, he is the Omega. He is the beginning and he is the end, which is, which was, and what is to come. Jesus Christ is coming. The Bible says no man knows the day or the hour. No man knows the day or the hour. Not even the, fa even, not even the angels know when he's coming. Only the Father. And the Father is Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. No man can get to heaven but through him. So say to friends, if you want to make it to heaven, you got to go through Jesus Christ. Because these bodies go back to the ground. We all came from dust. It doesn't matter what, if you're Asian, if you're, if you're Japan, if you're Ireland, if you're Australian, if you're Filipino, if you're American, if you're Chinese, if you're black or white, if you're Puerto Rican, if you're Portuguese, all these bodies go back to the dust. And ashes to ashes and dust to dust. But your spirit, your soul, is your soul that counts. Is your soul is the real you. 
These bodies, these fleshly bodies, just sell over the soul. So say to friends, we got to understand, to get your life with God, get your life to Jesus Christ because it's going to come a day when he's going to crack that sky. And when you crack that sky, all eyes are going to see him. And at that time, it's going to be too late. But while you have a time right now, get your life to God. Surrender your life so he can give you life. Surrender your life so God can give you life. God tastes better than the ice cream that you're eating. God tastes better than the Mountain Dew you have in your hand. The Bible says, taste the seed that the Lord is good. Amen. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. All of us, Brother Yusuf, Brother Matthew, Brother Mike, we all trust in him. So we are blessed. We are blessed. We're blessed going in and we're blessed coming out. We're blessed in the city and we are blessed in the field. But well, you could be blessed too. But matter of fact, you are blessed because you woke up to see the next day. A lot of people died in their sleep today. A lot of people died yesterday and you're blessed to see another day. That is a blessing. But you still will not acknowledge who God is. Your alarm clock did not wake you up this morning. What well, woke you up is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God woke you up this morning. And that's how good God is. God is a good God. Even in your bad times, God is still good. If you have bad habits, if you have bad relationships, if you, everything's going bad in your life, God is still good. Because you can always reach out to him. The Bible says his hand is not short that he cannot save. His hand is not short that he cannot save. iPhones are distractions. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> she about to hit me. She about to run into me. His hand is not short that he cannot save. God wants to save you. But your sins, your iniquities separate you from God. What type of sin? It could be fornication. It could be idolatry. It could be adulterer. Any type of sin, all sins, separate you from God. But God wants to save you from your sins. He's the Lamb of God who came to take the sins away from the world. As we watch the World Cup, you got all these different countries competing against each other in the game. You got this famous um, soccer player called Messi. Messi is a... a I never heard of him until I heard about the World Cup, but Messi is, a, I guess he's, a, he's like the Michael Jordan of soccer. But Messi will not save you. People worship Messi, people worship all these famous athletes, like Tom Brady. Tom Brady's not gonna die and rose on the third day for you. But Jesus did already. People worship Tom Brady like he's God. What an awesome God in Tom Brady. But Tom Brady, when he dies, he's not gonna rise on the third day. Those are idolatry. God hates idolatry. That's why this world's going down to shambles. This world's going to hell so fast because you worship other gods. Idolatry. Idolatry is rampant in America. You got places like, you know, Bible talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. Bible talks about abortion. Bible talks idolatry. All the things God hates. And it's by the grace of God that you're able to see the next day. What a mighty God we serve. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He did it for each and every one of us. This world, this nation is separated by racism, black against white, Mexicans against white. I thought we supposed to be the United States, not the divided states. Amen. Because the nation that stands against itself, the nation that, 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 that is divided against itself will not stand. Amen. This nation is falling apart. 
And God is showing, showing us signs each and every day. The signs of the times. All you got is, uh, all I can say is what's next? What, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen to America? What is next? Is there gonna be another 9-11? Is there gonna be another hurricane, another flood? Is, gonna be a, is, is there gonna be another earthquake happen to America? What well, time would tell. But if you die without God in your life, you will not make it into the kingdom of God. The Bible says that you must be born again. You must be born of the water and you must be born of the spirit of God. Amen. For whosoever is born of the flesh is flesh. Whosoever is born of the spirit is spirit. You got to have the spirit of God to make it into the kingdom of God. Accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior would not do it. Saying a sinner's prayer would not do it. The Bible says that you must be born again and walk accordingly to what the Bible says. And that's how much God loves you. Because he's willing for nobody to perish. He's willing no nobody to go to hell. He wants everybody to come to repentance. Repentance means turn. Turn from your alcohol. Turn from your drugs. Turn from your pornography. Turn from your addiction. Turn from and come to Jesus Christ. So he can clean you all up by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's by the blood, saints. It's by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's why you're able to live and walk and talk and have food on your table. Eyes to see, ears to hear. It's because of the blood. It's because of the blood of Jesus Christ. It's precious blood. It's the innocent blood. The blood that's pure. The blood that cleansed the Lamb of God. He came and sacrificed himself for the whole entire world. And people want to worship other gods. People want to worship Tom Brady. People want to worship um, Obama. People try to worship the things of this world. Rihanna, Jay-Z, Beyonce. God hates it. The Bible says God is a jealous God. God. He's a jealous God, but he's a just God. And he wants you to make your life right. He wants you to turn your life around. Pay attention to Jesus Christ because no man knows. No man know the day or the hour where he's coming. No man. Nobody. So we're here to let everybody know that God loves you. God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son. It's the love of God. Because before I had hatred in my heart, I couldn't, I couldn't love nobody. I couldn't hug, I couldn't hug no other guy. I couldn't hug no other woman without me thinking about sexual interactions with that woman. I couldn't do a holy kiss to nobody before I came to Christ. But once God cleaned me all up and brought, took the hatred out of my heart and put love in my heart, I could love anybody. I could love my Puerto Rican friend. I could love my Mexican neighbor. I could love my Spanish co-worker. I could love my Asian friend. Because I have the love of God within me. A lot of people don't even really love themselves. That's why you got a lot of people who do drugs and alcohol because they don't love themselves. The Bible says love your enemies. Love your enemies. It's, it's very hard to love your enemy, but if you got Jesus Christ, you can love anybody. You can love anybody with Jesus Christ, but you have to love God first. If you don't love God, you cannot love nobody. The love of God, you got to love him first. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything that you ask for, he will give it to you. All you got to do is ask in his name, he will give it to you. We serve a God that don't lie. His promises are yay and nay. Yes or no. And that's the God that we serve. We're not no Jehovah Witnesses. We're not no Mormons. We're not no... We're just born again Christians to just try to share the gospel to Harvard Square because Harvard Square needs to hear the gospel. 
And the gospel means good news. It's the good news of Christ. It's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He died so you could live today. So say to friends, I'm gonna pass this over to my brother, Brother Matthew. Go for one more round and we're gonna call it tonight. So Brother Matthew, I know you tie these uh, gospel tracks. <laughs> Lord, saints and friends, I just want to tell you all once again that Jesus Christ loves us, loves you all, and he does not wish any of us to perish. He just wants to give us life, life everlasting. The enemy wants to kill us, steal from us, and destroy us like he's been doing since the beginning of time. Hell has really, really enlarged. There's more demons out in the world. People aren't seeing this. People just see the physical part of the world, but we actually are in a spiritual warfare. Everything is spiritual, so people, open up your eyes. Please open up your eyes. Submit yourselves to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and he will heal you. Whatever the sickness is, he will heal you physically, spiritually, and mentally. So, saints and friends, if we didn't love you, we wouldn't be out here. I could be thinking of a million other things to do, but God commissioned us to uh, spread his word. He said, spread the word in season and out of season. So, saints and friends, I'm gonna close it out and pass it to Brother Mike, or Brother Yusuf. Uh, we love you. And please, think about giving your life to the Lord. You won't lose. In Jesus' name. How are you guys doing today? Not bad. You guys got any questions for us? Any questions for us? Are we on here? All right. So, Ms. Joseph, you... I want to tell people how much God loves them. See, a lot of people don't understand what love is. A lot of people think it's just like nice feelings and, uh, you know, feeling mushy feelings or, you know, just doing a nice bunch of good things for somebody. But love means that you're displacing yourself for somebody else. That means that you're sacrificing yourself for somebody else. So with this definition of love, if God sacrificed himself for somebody else, which is us, then we know that God is love, and we know that God loves. It's not just some wishy-washy thing, but it's a practical thing on this earth. It has to do with this plane of existence. Your body, your mind. It has to do with here and now. If you say that you love your spouse, if you say that you love your pets, or whoever it is, or whatever it is that you love, it means that you sacrifice your all for that. It means that you give yourself over for that. And anybody that says, I love God, and yet does not displace themselves for God, or whatever you say that you love, then that means it's not love. However, if you see that that person has sacrificed, then you know it's true. If it's not in truth, if it's not in spirit, and that's not love. And I ask that people would earnestly seek, that would truly, truly seek. It doesn't have to be a huge leap. It doesn't have to be something extreme. But what you do have to do is make a, a, a firm decision. 
And if you can't, a lot of people are stuck in the ways. A lot of people are stuck. I've been stuck. I've been stuck in my previous ways. I'm still stuck in some ways. And in that case, I pray to get unstuck. So if you're stuck in your mind and your first instinct is to ignore us, then go ahead and go against that instinct, that protective instinct, to fight against what we're saying. And come and ask us any question that you want, and we can tell you. Come and ask us anything, I'm open. Because I want to tell you that the man who first preached, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, was God himself. He originated the idea within himself. It came from him. And he showed himself in the form of a person. He showed himself in the form of a man. He walked 2,000 years ago in the land of Israel. He touched foot on a mountain in Israel. The creator of the known universe stepped foot on this earth. And we dare ignore him. How we dare ignore him. That's like your parents providing for you your whole life and never once you showing any sort of gratitude. Never once acknowledging the sacrifice that they showed you. Never once making an effort to give back. So if God gave me his own son, then what am I to do except to give back to him? What he paid for, what is his, what he purchased. If he purchased my life, then I owe him my life. If somebody died for you, you would owe them your life. If somebody stepped in front of that car for you, you would then owe them your life. And that's my message. That God stepped in front of a car for me, and now I owe him my life. That he would revive me when I was dead. I was dead in my sin and my transgression. I was dead, and now I have life. This is the meaning of the resurrection. Now some people will not believe this because it's so unbelievable to us. But as St. Paul said, why is it so incredible that God would raise the dead? Why is it so unbelievable that God would do this? If God is God, doesn't he have the ability, the power, and the willingness to raise from the dead? See, if that's people's misconception of God is that he's a God of destruction and he's a God of hatred. He's a God of death. But if you overcame death, then we have no more excuse. We have no more excuse since the last excuse will be done away with, which is death. See, we can't even hide in death itself. A lot of people say, just live it up, and then when I die, I'm dying, I'm gone. But when the resurrection comes, the resurrection of all the dead, good or bad, both evil and good, all will rise from the dead one day. So we can't even hide in death. We can't even wait until we die to make that decision. That's why I say now. That's why I say now is the time. It says, if I go in the grave, there you are. If I'm in my kitchen making myself dinner, there's God. If I'm out here preaching, there's God. If I'm dead, there's God. Either way, there he is. A lot of people say, well, where is he? I don't see him. I don't hear his voice. Did you ever wonder that? Why? 
I believe the reason why God doesn't show his face is because we're not ready for him. If God were to show his face right here and right now, we would all be zapped up immediately in his fire. The origin of all atoms and all energy and all stars and sun and moon. Do you think you could possibly stand in front of that? There's no way that you could stand in front of the sun and not get burnt up. Therefore, he had to show up in a form that we couldn't, that we could withstand. And that's all I got for right now. That's just. The Bible says that the root of all money is evil. The, the love of money is the root of all evil. Excuse me. Many people today, they put money in front of everything. They take the love of money over the care of their own parents. They take the love of money over the care of their own bodies, which are not theirs. They take the love of money over the person next to them. They choose the love of money over their own children. They choose the love of money to go and rape and murder. They choose the love of money to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. You see, in this way, the devil is obtaining many souls. He's presenting people with money they run for it. Even if they're obtaining it in a manner that is outside the guidelines of the Bible. They'll give you excuses like, I have to feed my kids. That's why I robbed those people. I needed food for my baby, so I killed that couple while they were sleeping. That is the excuse that many people tell you when they commit crimes against their fellow man. You see, the Bible says, if you seek me first, then everything will be added unto you. The problem is, people are getting desperate for money because they're not seeking the Lord Jesus Christ first in their life. And when their finances are stripped from them, they lose their mind. And they go around hurting other people. They're like little devils. They're going around stealing, killing, and destroying because they love money more than they love God. It is not in God's will for any of us to be destroyed. You see, the destruction for many has already started in this life. It's based on individual choices and roads. In this country, we act like we are so civilized. But I tell you right now, if there was a shortage of food right now, or an impending hurricane coming to this place, you would see mayhem on these streets. These people will lose their mind. When we had snowstorms in New Hampshire a few years ago, there was people losing their mind and fighting over water because one person thought that they deserved more cases of water than the next person. This isn't even a national disaster like what they had in Texas. If anything like Texas ever happened here, you will truly see how civilized people are here. There are animals more civilized than people here. The only thing that makes this place a civilized society is the abundance of money being here. If that is stripped from this place, you will see mayhem. You will see people getting raped, you will see people getting murdered at an even higher frequency. Because people love money. They don't love God, they love money. To them, blessings are only money, and money and nothing else. But you see, God sent His only Son, Jesus, so we can behold His glory, so we can walk in His path, walk in His righteousness, and He will establish everything else in our life. We have problems just like every person here walking by us has problems, but the difference is that we have hope. We have hope that through the perseverance of our faith, we will one day see our Lord and Creator. That is who we are laboring for. We are co-laboring in this harvest right now. You see, the Bible says that the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. The laborers are few because they just want to be a seat that's taken up in the church pew every Sunday. 
They think He's a part of your life. going to Sunday Mass and hearing a preacher preach real good for one hour is enough. But there are people all around them on their path to destruction. You see, love warns, love rebukes, love restores, love heals. But many people have forsaken the love of God for the love of money, and that is why their life is cursed. I can name some examples over the last few months. Anthony Bourdain, famous editor, world-traveled chef, blogger, millionaire, killed himself. Katie Spade, world-famous bag maker. Many people in high school loved her bags, would pay 300 bucks for a little bag. She killed herself, she's dead. These are just examples of some people who died without the Lord Jesus. They went to and fro, wandering this earth. They obtained everything that anybody could want. They had it in the palm of their hand and still, they put their own light out. Has it ever crossed somebody's mind why somebody would kill themselves when they seemingly have the whole world at their feet? It's because money will never bring you completion because there's something that's built within every human being to want to connect with something higher than himself. This is a yearning that the God, Jesus Christ, put inside of all of us from the beginning of time. And he's the only one that can fill that void. Alcohol will not fill your void. Eating five triple whoppers from Burger King will not fill your void. It will fill your stomach, but you will still go to hell when you die. French fries will not fill your void. Alcohol will not fill your void. You will still feel an emptiness. There will not be a fulfillment. The fulfillment that I'm speaking of is a spiritual fulfillment. When you have a peace that's abiding in you. When you have a peace that's in your very being, when people are able to look at you and ask you, there's something different about you from other people, what is it? Aside from the Lord Jesus, I am no different than anybody else. The only thing that is different about me than some people, not all, is that I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as my savior. He's a full-time savior, so I have to be a full-time Christian. Part-time Christians will get fired. They will be terminated. Many people think that saying a few Hail Marys, a few vainful prayers every morning will save their soul, but it won't. You see, the Bible says to repent, repent, the kingdom as is at hand. And the Bible says that the kingdom is also within you. You see, when you repent and you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, then you immerse yourself in the word of God and you fellowship with the brothers and sisters in Christ. Christ grows inside of you. He creates a new being. It's called being born again. That means everything is new. The things that you used to desire before, you no longer want those things. The things that used to give you a high or a drunkenness, you no longer want those things. The only thing that you will want more than breath itself is God. You will walk every day, keeping the ways of the Lord on your mind, on the frontlet, in between your eyes, to be single-eyed and not double-minded, and God will sustain all your ways. You see, in this country, we think blessings are driving a nice car, owning a nice house, having a vacation house on a cape, or somewhere else. But this country is so immensely blessed if you compare this country to many nations around the world, ask yourself, why does everybody want to come here? Why do we have immigration problems in this country? Because this country is blessed. This country helps more people in the world than any other country. And don't let anybody fool you and tell you that they don't care, because they do. But if the prosperity that people come here for was stripped from this land right now at this very moment, how would people act right now? How would people conduct themselves? If the money that built this land was stripped from it right now, how would people conduct themselves? I can tell you right now the squirrels in the trees would be more civilized than most human beings. Many people in this land, they think that they're good because we live in a land of laws. But there are places that the laws only cater to the financial elite and the governments. Look at Venezuela where people are eating out of trash cans. Look at the Philippines where real homeless people really are naked, completely naked, 
We're not like here where they have cell phones and nice shoes and healthcare available to them. In these places, you will really see the devil's works manifest right to your face. There is such a gap in between levels of money. You see people who have no money than people who have all the money. In this world, it'll confuse you. It'll send you strong delusions telling you to just chase money and nothing else. But money will not save your soul. You need the Lord Jesus. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus. You need to believe in his name. Ask him to save you. Be baptized in water and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Set yourself aside and be separate. Do not be partakers of this world. Be ye separate. The Bible says do not do the things of this world. But many people are walking around compromising. They're even telling their friends that are lost in sin that it's okay. God loves you just the way you are. It is not true. That is a lie. These people themselves are deceived, so they're going around deceiving others. You have churches out here affirming certain groups, flying rainbow flags outside of them. I can tell you right now that is not found anywhere in the Holy Bible. That is not in the Holy Bible. And these are actually workers of iniquity that work for the devil. The problem is, is that, so you see in this world there's a false unity. The body of Christ is supposed to stand as one, but we have not come together yet. It will happen. But see, the Antichrist, he's already got his groups planted firmly in the streets of America. You have groups fighting the police in Portland, Oregon. You have, you have uh, a degradation of the family values in this country where kids are disrespecting their parents. Men are becoming lovers of themselves and scoffers. You see, these are all biblical things. If you open up your Bible and look, it tells you the, the criteria for the end times. We are headed right in that direction. It takes a tremendous amount of... The Bible says that only a few shall be saved. Why is the road narrow to salvation? Because it is increasingly difficult. To stay holy in this world is increasingly difficult. Just sit close. This society has gotten so desensitized to pornography that people think it's fine to walk around half naked. If you look at a prostitute in the 1920s on Google, they are wearing clothing that is more civilized than girls are wearing in 2018 that are not prostitutes. If you think I'm lying to you, look it up. Can you imagine that? A woman of the night, a streetwalker, that was wearing apparel that is more holy than most people that wear to church, than what they wear to go to church. You see, the standard of holiness in this world has been compromised. The people in this world are telling you there's a new way to God, but I tell you right now that that is a lie. There's only one way to God, and that is Acts Christianity. There is no new way to God. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. He was here before the foundation of the earth, and he will sure be here after it. It's amazing how much people have lost respect for themselves. People walk around, and they will tell you, I'm not this type of a person, but they're prostituting themselves as they walk by. There's no standards of holiness. They'll have their butt cheeks hanging out their shirts. They'll have their breasts hanging out their shirts to show every man who's walking by what it is that they have. But if a man looks at them, they must be a pervert. But you see, it's really their fault because they're going around tempting others, causing people to sin. They'll be held accountable for it. The Bible says to be holy. A beautiful woman to me is virtuous, dressed, well dressed. There's something about a girl who doesn't want to show herself that to me is more attractive than a girl showing her navel to everyone. It seems like in today's day and age that that is gone. Because people love the flesh more than anything else. They love the flesh. They love themselves. They've become lovers of themselves. You see, there are mockers and scoffers in this world that hate the word of God. 
But it is okay because Christ died for them too. Amen. I urge you today to look into the mirror and evaluate yourself to see if you are even in the faith of Jesus Christ. Not just lip service where you say, I, I believe in Jesus. I'm Catholic. Yeah, I just came from Mass. Um, I'm a Baptist or I'm a Pentecostal. I'm a Presbyterian. I'm this and I'm that. I ask you to urge yourself, to ask yourself, are you born again? I can tell you right now that the only denomination that is in heaven are those who are born again. Truly born again. That live after the spirit of God and focus on the things that are pure and not of this world. What happened to the respect that people had for each other before? You know, these groups out there that call themselves tolerant are the most violent groups that are out there. They talk about peace, love, and tolerance, but as soon as you say anything that goes against what they're trying to preach proudly in the streets, they call you a bigot, a homophobe, a xenophobe, and all these things. But in reality, it's them who is abrasive. If you don't want to believe and say, I don't like your Jesus, it's not going to affect me in any way, shape, or form. I wish no harm upon anybody. But if you tell one of these groups out there, I don't stand for what you stand for publicly, they will attack you. They're going around punching people in the face just for who they voted for, for wearing a Trump hat. If you say anything about the homosexual agenda, you'll get attacked. I've seen videos of it on YouTube. These aren't groups of love and tolerance. These are the hate groups. People here are confused. You see, Jesus is a God of order, not of disorder. The God of this world, the devil, is who's creating these things, all these different groups and factions. The end goal is to divide this place and shatter it. Like my brother earlier said, how's divided will not stand. And I can assure you right now that the devil's house is not divided. It is quite united. He's in the details of all of these groups out here that are going against the ways of the Lord. They are all working for him. See, the devil has people deceived. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. Before anything else, he was a liar first. And that's all he will ever be. But the sad fact is that people are believing his lies. People aren't basing their truth on the word of God. They're basing it on their own philosophy. They're following their hearts. The Bible says to lean not on your own understanding but to trust in the word of God, to follow it, to learn what is the permissible will of the Lord. You have people out here confessing Christ that are fornicating, that are shacking up with other believers, that want to be boyfriend and girlfriend with someone. And I can tell you right now that if you die in your sin, you will be going to hell. I don't care if you've been baptized. The Bible says, sin ye not. When, he rebuked, when Jesus rebuked the woman at the well, he said, go forth and sin no more. She said he was married. She was married. He said, you aren't married. You have other husbands. He said it to her in love, and then he told her, go and sin no more. He did not say, continue in sin. I will still save your soul. That is a lie. The problem is that people want to have one foot in the world and one foot in heaven. You can't. That's like having one foot in the grave and one foot on the ground. You can't be in two places at once. You have to pick one. There's a wall. There's a barrier. You cannot be in heaven and hell at the same time. So why would you dilute yourself and mix yourself with the ways of this world and lie to yourself? Stop comparing yourself to the person around you. Compare yourself to the Lord of the Bible and you will see that you have fallen short. Ask him to show you your sinful ways. He will show you everything that is that you are doing that's contrary to his word. He doesn't want anyone to perish. But many people love their sins more than they love God. They'll even say, I am this. You say I believe sect. in the devil? Yeah. Believe in it, brother. I say God. Believe in believe he's going to hell too people are confused some people even say i believe in the devil at least he's honest with himself i can at least appreciate that honesty <laughs> but the fact remains that this devil that you believe in will not save your soul he hates you even if you believe in him and pray to him and worship him his goal is to destroy you 
And the only thing that is stopping the Lord from destroying you is his love. Because he's giving you time to repent. He's even giving wicked people and evildoers time to repent. There are people who are walking by here who I know for a fact practice witchcraft. <laughs> you should be thankful that God hasn't thrown your what carcass you straight into hell. Grab your attention. <laughs> It is only God's mercy that's keeping all of us alive. You see, people say God is a God of hate, but there are people who are actively doing witchcraft, knowing what kingdom they serve. They know what they're doing. And God has not removed them yet. So tell me that God is not merciful. He gives everybody time to repent. And after that, he pulls your plug, just like turning out the light at night. <laughs> I just want to say that today is a day of salvation. Some of you walking by me might not see tomorrow. Some of you might not see a few hours from now. Some of you have plans for next week, tomorrow, next month, next year, but you should be saying, Lord willing, I will do these things. For it's only God that holds your destiny in his hand, not you. You're not the master of yourself. If you are a true Christian, your life is supposed to be made to honor God. Every day. To honor God with your life. To be a living sacrifice to Him. To sacrifice your time for the Lord. To read about His will. To preach the gospel. This is what every Christian is commanded to do, not just some, every Christian. We're not all called to be ministers, we're not all called to pastors, but it says that we are all called to be preachers. We're all called to preach. How many people share the love of Jesus to their neighbor? Or they just say, I don't want to offend anyone, I'll just keep it to myself. Just think. I guess that's the same behavior that got the saints killed in the past, right? Just keeping their mouth closed. You see, the Bible says that those who try to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake shall find eternal life. The Bible is death to the flesh, but life to the spirit. And in it is life, eternal life. These flesh suits that we have are like borrowed DVDs. It's like Redbox. You got one out of a box, you keep it for a time, and then you have to return it to the sender. Who is the sender? His name is Jesus Christ. Once you are done on this earth, your casing will go back to the box, but the CD will go back to the sender. The CD will then be inspected by the creator to see if there's any scuffs, any imperfections. You see, this life is supposed to be like a refiner's fire through which we come out purified and golden. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ gives people time to repent. Go open your Bible and read it. It's written right in the word of God. Don't tell me what Jesus Christ would and wouldn't do. We have a Bible right here. We have a Bible right here. There's nobody hurting anybody. I'm preaching the word of God. I'm preaching the word of God. Did not say anybody kill themselves. There you go. You have demons. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You have a devil. You have devil. You have demons. You have demons. You have demons. No, we don't. The Bible talks more about hell than heaven. You're demon possessed. You're demon. The Bible talks about hell more than heaven. Exactly. Because God does not want you to go there. God's there, you go. there you go. There you go. That's a nice mouth. I know you're who you Christian, are now. Huh? You're gonna tell me what Jesus said, but you're swearing. I know who you are now. There you. Nobody said to kill anybody. You, you are the one that's saying that. You're putting words in my mouth. You're the devil. The devil's the accuser of the brethren. He lies about the brethren night and day. That's exactly what you're doing. You're a worker of iniquity, and I rebuke thee, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Get thee hence. You see, this is what the word of God does to people. There you have the devil about to cross the street, waiting for that light to turn green, walking to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. It looks like a woman, but there are male spirits inside of it that become aggressive when they hear the name of Jesus. 
You see, there's power in the name power. of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus, Amen. and demons have to cower to it. Power. Jesus gave us power over everything on this earth. I do not fear anybody. Amen. I fear God himself. Amen. I do not fear a demonic spirit. They will bend at the name of Jesus on judgment day. Amen. Every man will hit their knees. Every angel will hit their knees on judgment day. I do not fear what man can do to me. I fear God. I hope somebody saw what just happened because that's what you call demonic. You see, this woman says, this is not what Jesus said and then proceeded to act just like the devil. She said, you told people to go kill themselves. But you see, that's what Satan does. He puts words in our mouth. I never said anything about somebody to go kill themselves. I was actually naming examples of people who had money that killed themselves. Big difference. But either way, God is good. God still loves that woman if she chooses to repent. God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to atone for our sins once and for all. On the cross, it said, it was finished. Done. It was finished. The work was done. All we have to do is accept it and surrender our life to God, and the rest he will work out for us. He is our lawyer. He's our intercessor. He intercedes on behalf of the Father for us. If we were in a courtroom and the devil across the street was the accuser, Jesus Christ would be the mediator and God would be the judge. You see, right now in the heavenly places, Jesus is on our behalf. The devil is there accusing us, saying that we're saying hate, and Jesus is saying, no, they're not. They're preaching my word. Devil, shut your mouth. And he has no choice but to listen. You see, many people confess the name of Christ, but they walk in fear. They walk by what their sight tells them. But the Bible says that the just shall walk and live by faith, not by sight. There are many circumstances in all of our lives right now that can make us quit if we chose to only look at things through our fleshly eyes. But I know that our God is a God of favor. And at the twinkling of an eye, if he chooses to, he can take us out of the situations that we are in today. But he leaves us in those places sometimes to learn. Because it's a refiner's fire. God bless you. Amen. All right. God is a refining fire. He wants to purge us of our dead works. He wants to take out every belief that is not of him. But there are so many doctrines out there that are contrary to the word of the Lord. What do you believe in today? Do you believe that a tree can save you? Do you believe if you meditate underneath a tree long enough that you'll get some sort of enlightenment that nobody's ever had before? You won't. The only enlightenment that will occur is through the Lord Jesus Christ. He will open up the eyes of your heart. And then you'll see through your heart. And you'll see that God's heart hurts every day when he sees people destroying themselves. But he has no choice but to let them go. Because we have a free will in this world. The same way I have a free will to jump in front of a bus if I wanted to. We all have choices. I've had voices telling me to kill myself before. I did not listen to them because I knew who they were. Sometimes when I preach the word, a few days after, I get such strong attacks that it would make most people quit, but I won't. I won't, because I'm not going to be dictated by what my flesh tells me to do, or what my something tells my flesh to do. I'm dictated by the word of God. The word of God mandates for me to go preach the Bible. I'm here preaching the Bible. I'm doing what God told me to do. It's called the Great Commission. See, Jesus wills that none perish. That's why he came here. That's why he sent out the disciples of Jesus Christ to go preach after he was gone. And that's what we are doing. We are just merely carrying on the legacy of the saints. I just wanted to say today, if you are interested in what we are talking about, come and speak to us. If you want to know how to be saved, come talk to us. God bless all of you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Ten percent. Ten percent. Should have told me to shut up.
Well, the Be Ready Street Ministries, we are live at Harvard Square, and I'd like to say to everybody that God loves you. You know, the Bible says that demons tremble at the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, don't you know Satan, Lucifer himself, believes in God? That's why I don't understand all these unbeliefs. All these atheists out here don't believe in God, but Satan himself believes in God. He got kicked out of heaven. And a lot of people get kicked out. They go straight to hell if you don't believe in God. Unbelief is a growing religion. Unbelief. A lot of people do not believe in God. But we believe in God. Because we have faith in God. Because we love God. We love him because he first loved us. He loved us at the cross. He died at the cross so you won't be lost. And right now we're living in the lost and dying world. But our Be Ready Street Ministries, we'll be out here probably next Sunday, reaching out to the lost, passing out some gospel tracts and free Bibles and have personal conversations and sharing the gospel. And that's what we do, God commandment to do all these things. Because we love the Lord. We want to glorify his name. Because his name is above every name. His name healed the sick. His name raised the dead. His name passed out demons. And that name is above every name. That name is above Buddha. That name is above Muhammad. That name is above Donald Trump. That name is above Oprah. That name is above Dr. Phil. That name is above every name because there's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. Jesus is the name, and the holiness is his name. You gotta stay holy. The Bible says, be holy, for I am holy. Because without holiness, no man can see the Lord. So you gotta stay holy. Dress holy, live holy, talk holy, be holy. Because we say the Holy God, we read the Holy Bible. And the Bible tells us to be holy. But we love you. God bless you. Harvest Square, we will be back. We'll be back. And the Terminators, the movie of the Terminator, he said, I'll be back. <laughs> we wanted to know that the Be Ready Street Ministries will be back. Well, God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. We love you in Jesus' name. If you have any questions, we're here to answer any questions. Anything. We're here. We came with peace. We came with love. And we just want to spread the gospel. So God bless you. We love you. I thank God for the, for the preachers. The preachers today. And it preach a good message is to repent and come to Christ. Repent or you will like Christ perish, the Bible says. So God bless you all and we love you in the name of Jesus Christ. We love you all and God bless you. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah. I laughed at that. Dude, it happened at just, just the time that we wanted to happen because I was talking to a Muslim right there asking questions. Wow. Yeah. So it's good for him. Yeah, so we got to see the name of the seats. It does the alpha. Wow. Sheep's in the goats, man. That's who we are. I was preaching to provoke people. I was preaching to provoke the